Welcome to part five of my series on exploratory data analysis with Excel. The subject of this video is going to be creating and using bar charts in Excel to explore a data set. So if you've reached this video prematurely, if you need to see video one of the series, go ahead and click up here and you can go ahead and find that video right there. Next up, if you want the workbooks in this series, you can get them by looking down in the description there'll be a link to a GitHub repo where you can download all of the Excel workbooks in this series. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you can see here I'm in Excel and all I've done is taken one of the worksheets here, copied it and renamed it part five bar charts. And what we can see here is the Titanic data set, which you've been using throughout this series. So we're gonna create a bar chart. And the easiest way to create bar charts when you're doing exploratory data analysis with Excel is to create a bar chart as a pivot chart, create a bar chart from a pivot table. It makes things a lot easier. You can drag and drop all the kinds of stuff. You can do a lot of exploratory analyses very quickly using a bar chart created from a pivot table. So that's what we're going to do. First up, we're going to go ahead and insert a pivot table and I'm going to put it in the existing worksheet here. And let's just go ahead and drop it in right here. Okay. Boom. And we're gonna go ahead and scroll over here. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe shrink up Excel a little bit so that my smiling face doesn't cover it up so much. So we've got a bare pivot table, it's empty. So one of the first things that we would like to explore in this data set is obviously survival rates because that's the, that's the business question that we're trying to answer with this data. What patterns in the data are highly associated with passengers on the Titanic that survived? That's what we're looking for. Pivot tables work with categorical data. They don't work with numeric data. We've looked at histograms already. We've looked at box and whisker plots, box plots in this series. Those are great for working with numeric data. The next video in this series will be working with scatter plots, which is also for working with numeric data but bar charts are really about categories and counting things. So we've got four columns of data in the data set already that are categorical. We've got survived, P class, right? Which class of ticket you have on the Titanic, your gender, male or female, as evidenced in the data by the sex column, the sex feature. And lastly, we have embarked of what port did you get on the Titanic or did the passenger get on the Titanic? So let's create a bar chart with that stuff. So first up, what we'll do is we'll drag sex down to the rows here, and then we'll drag down new P class to create a hierarchy here. And then lastly, we will drag down embarked. And then we get a nice little pivot table. Let me hide the ribbon there so you can see it all. Great. And now we'll throw in survived because that's what we're interested in, right? We want to know if there are any patterns in these characteristics of the data that are highly associated with survival. So we'll go ahead and drag new survived to the columns, and then we'll drag it down to the values as well. I'm going to close some of this up real quick. So close up first and second and third class, because the first thing I want to show you is when you use bar charts, you should use two forms of a bar chart and we'll use both in this video. One, you want a bar chart that shows you the absolute counts, and then you want a bar chart that shows you the proportions. And here's the reason why. If you only work with bar charts that show proportions, which are very cool and very useful, they mask where the gravity of the data is located. When, what I mean by that is, where are the most number of individual rows of data located? Proportions smooth all that out. You don't know if this bar chart proportion is for 100 records or 100 rows of data, and this proportion is for 1,000 rows. But generally speaking, when you're doing business analysis, when you're doing exploratory analysis with business data, you tend to want to focus on groups, chunks of data that have the most rows, because those typically have the most impact. So that's why you want both kinds of bar charts, one with counts and one with proportions. And you can see that here in the quick pivot table that I've got. So you can see here we have 891 total rows of data. That's what we have. But notice that more than a third of all of the rows of data in the data set 
347 of them to be exact, are males in third class. So what that tells you is that from a center of gravity perspective, third class males are extremely important because they represent more than a third of all the data. Right? So that and you would lose that if you just looked at a bar chart with, that simply had proportions on it. Okay, enough about that. So let's go ahead and expand this back out. And we're gonna go ahead and create a pivot chart. And since we don't need to see this anymore, I'm just gonna go ahead and maximize Excel again. And let's go ahead and insert a pivot chart, a bar chart created from this pivot table. So we're gonna go ahead and insert, and we're gonna go up to pivot chart and select pivot chart. So the first thing that we want is we want counts. So the easiest way to do that is to go with a stacked column. Okay, so we're gonna go with stacked column here. Click OK, and we get a nice bar chart here. I'm gonna go ahead and move this down so we get some more real estate here. It's gonna be pretty cool. Boop, boop, boop. Move it down. All right. I'll make this bigger so we can see it. Awesome. So I'm just gonna get rid of this because I think it just, you know, it just makes things a little more complicated. Okay. Awesome. So we've got a bar chart here. And what the bar chart is showing us is counts. So for example, this is females in first, clan, uh, first class that got on the ship in Cherbourg in France. And we can see here, they basically looks like all of them except for maybe one survived and it was around maybe 40 something people, 40 something passengers that fall in this particular category. And it, just generally speaking, we're going to be looking at two things in this particular visualization. One, we're going to be looking at the relative proportion of the colored bars, right? Because orange means that they survived and blue means that they perished. So that gives us some general indication of the survival rates. And we're also gonna look at the length of the bar because that tells us how many observations, how many rows of data, where the center of gravity is. And as not surprisingly, we can see that males in third class that got on in um, Southampton, look at that Whew, more than 250 of them and very few survived. So this visualization right here tells us a lot. It says, okay, look, we got a lot of males in third class and they don't survive. And it doesn't really seem like proportion wise, any particular place where a third class male passenger got on the Titanic matters because there are, the orange portions of each of these bars is very, very thin. It's very skinny. And you say, okay, cool. Um, we already kind of know that females in first and second class overwhelmingly survive no matter where they got on the ship. It looks like third class females. Okay. It's kind of interesting. You see that Sherborg in uh, Queenstown, I believe that this is, they seem to have much better proportions than those that got on in Sherborg or excuse me, Southampton, excuse me, Southampton S stands for Southampton. <laughs> and you can see here a lot going on. This is a great data visualization. Now, what really will make this pop in terms of proportions, actually answering the questions of like, which, which segment of the data overwhelmingly like will just jump out to your eye that they survived, is creating a proportions chart, um, which, which is known in Excel as a stacked bar chart. So once again, we'll just go up to here, we'll click insert, we're gonna do a pivot chart, and we're gonna do stack this time, boom. And you can see already, even without me increasing the size of the chart, that obviously the orange dominates over here, which is all females and especially females in first and second class. So let's hide all this stuff just to have more real estate. And now we can see the proportions. This is really cool, right? And what we can do now that we've got these pivot charts is we can obviously take things in and out. So like, for example, we can remove embarked and we can just look at first class and class third class males, or we can put it embarked back in and then get rid of P class. Let's see, oh yeah, look at that, right? So you do these kinds of things are pretty useful, right? Creating pivot charts and then being able to quickly and easily move data in and out is one of the hallmarks of doing exploratory data analysis in Excel, right? Especially with pivot charts. This is wildly awesome stuff. So let's put new P class back in. Now, this is a great data visualization because it incorporates four dimensions at the same time. We've got our survival, right? Orange or blue, that's one dimension. We have male versus female, that's our second dimension. We've got 
P class for second or third, that's our third dimension. And lastly, we have embarked where you got on the ship, that's fourth, it's four dimensions. So this is a pretty powerful visualization. Unfortunately, one of the things with Excel and the way it chooses to do visualizations is, at least, at least to me anyway, is that they get a little unwieldy to look at and understand what's going on because of the way they structure the actual visualization. So three dimensions isn't too bad. So I'm gonna remove embarked again. This isn't too bad, right? This is three dimensions. We got males here, females, first, second, and third. And then the color coding, of course, is our third dimension of survived. This is a pretty decent visualization. However, if you're looking for more power, this is a little bit unfortunate because you wanna be able to add more dimensions and then, but still have the actual resulting visualization really work well for you as the data analyst. So you can just kind of look, you can just like kind of sit back and you can just kind of look at it and see, you know, what's going on. And when we add dimensions here, I put embarked back in, it gets more and more complicated. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about regarding something that's a little bit better in terms of using bar charts. It also works with lots of dimensions. Okay, so this is a good example of what I'm talking about here. So this is a four dimensional bar chart. You can see here we have males and females, males and females, males and females, males and females. That's our first dimension. We have third class folks. We have second class folks. We got first class folks. So that's our second dimension. We've got where folks got on the ship. This is embarked. So it's our third dimension. And then of course our color coding is our fourth dimension. And I hope you would agree that this representation of the data is superior to what you would get in Excel, what we saw in Excel. This was created using the R programming language um, and it allows you to quickly and easily create super awesome data visualizations like this. So this is the counts. You can see here we have passenger count on the Y axis here. And you can quickly and easily see what's going on in the data. It's a little bit, I would argue this grid representation is a lot more um, powerful than what Excel does out of the box. Now I can also show you the proportions here. So this is the proportion chart. So these are the two equivalent charts that we saw in Excel. Once again, the grid, I think works a lot better than the way Excel does it in terms of just like putting all the bars along the um, X axis. So this is good stuff, powerful stuff, and it really catches your eye. So bar charts like this, especially multi-dimensional bar charts are awesome. They're one of the best ways to create insightful data visualizations and explore your data. By the way, just so that you know, I have an online program that I teach, which takes your skills as an Excel user and teaches you how to do R programming and create data visualizations just like this. And if you're interested in learning more about that, you can just go ahead and click up here and I've got a video on my channel that will talk, uh, that talks all about that. Bar charts, totally awesome data visualization. If you're going to be serious about working with your business data, exploring it, understanding what's going on. Bar charts needs to be a tool in your visualization tool belt, without a doubt. So next up in the series, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be talking about scatter plots, which are uh, a data visualization where you have numeric features on both the x-axis and on the y-axis. And then they're super powerful when you color code the dots, you add a third dimension to them, and that's exactly what we will do in the next video. And when that's ready, that'll show up either here or here, on the video here and you can just click the card and it'll take you to that video when it's ready. There you have it. Part five of exploratory data analysis with Excel bar charts. Until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.